Kevin Blanche, Fukushima update on the typhoon. It's much worse than anybody thought over there. The live cam you can see, me. that doesn't tell the story over there. Uh, Fukushima, TEPCO is doing massive dumps, massive dumps right now. Even the Wall Street Journal is reporting it. That's how the nuclear industry plays. I want people to know when Sandy happened, as I put out that alert before at Oyster Creek, all hands on deck. Talk about close to a meltdown. Pilgrim, talk about close to a meltdown. They, uh, that's how the nuclear industry has played for years. Anytime a hurricane rolls in, anytime flooding situation gives their opportunity to flush into the system. Cahoon did it massively in the floods on the Mississippi a couple years ago. That's what's, they are dumping gigantic amounts illegally. Now remember this, everybody remember this. We were told as we fought this for years, by law, that was the negotiated, these are international law, by law, they had to have a contingency plan for these catastrophes. Now this isn't just, this is law, international law. These are crimes against humanity. Obviously they have no solution, they have no plan. So Fukushima has no plan, they have no plan here. Why do you think they have one in? Because they don't know what to do. They, they, all this, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that work for the nuclear industry, none of them do anything. It's just a giant cash cow from hell. They have no answers, zero answers. Stay tuned, they're doing massive dumps. All you nuclear activists, anti-nuclear fighters, all hands on deck, all hands on deck. They are massively dumping as I'm speaking. Gigantic, the fishes, it's over. The Northern Fishing Alliance, you'll see them come out and go skits on this. And you know, there was prosecution leading up over there. I listened to the hearings. I listened to translation on the hearings on 12, 12, 12. And it was the U.S. The U.S. controls the seas over there. USS Reagan. By the way, one of the ships that was in there, we had a football camp. Yeah, yeah, on the ship. And the the Navy themselves has come out and says we cannot ever get the, you know, the USS Reagan. There was eight ships in there. This is the United States' gig. They're they're calling the shots over there, and we know what the United States is anymore. The United States of General Electric. The United States of nuclearism. Wow. And to you people in Georgia, that plant that's getting reopened, you need to organize down there and try to at least call some attention to the statistical probability of a nuclear meltdown is gigantic in the first two years of a new plant. Everybody says, oh, that old plant, Chernobyl. Remember when Chernobyl happened? That plant wasn't very old. Now, these are old and they're decrepit and whatever. They're all ticking time bombs. Well, and they've been going off. Like I said, Sandy, you guys think about Sandy. You know what kind of massive dumps? Pilgrim. When you guys did your protest, it worked out there. You got a lot of attention. You need to get YouTube cameras out there. TEPCO is dumping right here, right now, giant amounts. Of course, they've been dumping every single day, but I'm talking even hundreds of times. They're emptying all their tanks. They're emptying out over there. This is their opportunity. The nuclear industry has played this game for decades. Anytime there's a catastrophe, flooding hurricane, everybody's attention's off, the cameras you couldn't see, you know, that's the way they play. And they're doing This is even the Wall Street Nuclear Journal is reporting this. So anything they report, anti-nuclear, times it by about a billion. Stan tuned. A severe tropical storm is whipping across Japan and residents are taking cover. Man Yi has brought heavy rain and strong winds, triggering flooding, landslides and power outages. One person has been killed and three are missing. Over 70 others have been injured. Forecasters with the Japan Meteorological Agency say Man Yi is moving northeast at about 55 kilometers per hour. They've recorded winds of 90 kilometers per hour and maximum gusts of 126. People in Kyoto have been watching the river that runs through their city spill over its banks. The water has flooded streets, houses and tourist areas. Some hotel staff had to take their guests to safety by boat. It rained all night, but I didn't think things would get this bad. Forecasters are expecting torrential rain of roughly 8 centimeters per hour in some parts of central and eastern Japan, including Tokyo. Hello there, welcome to Newsline. It's Monday, September 16th. I'm Catherine Kobayashi in Tokyo. Workers at a utility company in Japan have taken the country's only functioning reactor offline. For the first time in about 14 months, none of the nation's 50 commercial...
commercial reactors is generating power, and there's no firm date for when any of them will restart again. Kansai Electric Power Company workers began lowering the output of a reactor at the OE plant on Sunday evening. The unit stopped generating electricity at 11 p.m. Japan time. It will now undergo a scheduled safety inspection. In 2011, reactors across Japan went offline for safety checks soon after the crisis began at the nuclear plant in Fukushima. Workers restarted two reactors at the OE plant last year. They took one unit offline earlier this month for maintenance before powering down the reactor that just stopped generating power. Utilities have asked nuclear regulators for approval to restart 12 reactors at six power plants, including OE. The regulators began safety inspections from July. The process is expected to take about six months. Local municipalities must also give their approval before reactors can be restarted. So at this point, no one can say when Japan will be using nuclear energy again. Crews at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant are scrambling to protect the facility from the weather. Severe tropical storm Mai is heading their way. Workers are increasing patrols to make sure stored water that's contaminated with radiation doesn't overflow. Forecasters expect Mani will blow through Fukushima Prefecture later in the day. Already, it has dumped about 42 millimeters of rain per hour on a town near the crippled plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers are worried about the impact of strong winds. They've placed weights on large cranes used to move debris to keep them from being toppled. And they've attached ropes to outdoor piping and pumps that are used to inject cooling water into the reactors. Workers discovered water overflowing from a fence around tanks that store radioactive water. They're checking the water to determine if it contains any contaminants. Right now, the severe tropical storm has just made landfall in central Japan. Forecasters are warning people to be on guard for high waves, flooding, landslides and tornadoes. Japan Meteorological Agency officials say Mani is moving north-northeast at about 40 kilometers per hour. They've recorded winds of around 110 kilometers per hour and maximum gusts of about 160 kilometers per hour. Forecasters are expecting roughly half a meter of rain to soak some areas in central and eastern Japan, including Tokyo. They're also calling for lightning. The storm has already caused damage. A landslide wrecked a house in western Japan. Rescue workers are searching for a woman who lives there. The storm has put crews at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant on alert. The heavy rain has prompted them to take precautions to prevent contaminated water from leaking into the environment. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers are increasing patrols on site. They don't want the rain to flood the basements of some buildings and an underground tunnel. That could cause highly contaminated water that's in there to spill over. Crews are also concerned about a storage tank that leaked highly radioactive water last month. They took water samples from behind a barrier that surrounds the tank. TEPCO officials say they detected elevated levels of strontium and other radioactive substances. They say they'll transfer the water behind the barrier to a storage tank. The storm has forced plant workers to delay some projects for the day. The jobs include the construction of new storage tanks and the building of steel walls designed to prevent contaminated groundwater from seeping into the sea.